Friends, hello everyone. My name is Panasyuk, and I went to live on a completely uninhabited island, which I previously named Shark Island. And today is the continuation of the 11th day that I am on an uninhabited island. The water is rising very quickly, right before my eyes. I arrived on the island during the rainy season, and this tropical downpour lasted for about two hours. As soon as it ended, I noticed fish activity on the water's surface. Some predatory fish were splashing at the surface, chasing small fish. Birds were flying in the sky, and after half an hour, the scorching sun came out. Last time, during an underwater hunt near a coral reef, I discovered giant tridacna clams. I decided to take my underwater hunting gear to find them, collect and prepare them. I will also take my crossbow with me, just in case I come across a large fish on the way. In those places where I previously encountered sharks underwater, there was nothing interesting. I swam through the most promising areas, but there was no big fish there. I decided not to waste any more time and swam straight to the place where I saw the giant tridacna clams. During the underwater hunt, I heard a ringing sound, which means that somewhere on the horizon, a fishing boat is sailing. I surfaced to mark my location and look around carefully. Passing fishermen may not notice an underwater hunter, and this is very dangerous. That is why I use a rescue boy to mark the area where I am underwater hunting. But when I surfaced and looked around, I didn't see anyone. And continued my underwater hunt. Here in the coral reef, a large tridacna clam opened up. I just placed the tip of my crossbow into it and it firmly clamped its teeth. Grabbing my crossbow, so I easily pulled it out of the coral reef and swam to the shore. You know, friends, while editing my videos, I have noticed unidentified objects in the frame more than once that I did not notice during the filming. This happened again now. Notice that when I grab the clam with my hand, an unknown object detaches from it below and quickly goes into the depth. At that moment, I did not notice it at all. And during video editing, I was very surprised. What is that? It looks like some kind of alien octopus. If you know what it was, write to me in the comments under the video. I threw the caught prey on the shore, took the crossbow and went back underwater to look more carefully again. Maybe I will manage to find another Tridacna clam. But underwater, I saw a school of fish. I chose the biggest one, aimed and shot. All right, heading back to the shore. I will be preparing this delicacy.
Here is such a pattern tridacna clam. These pattern tridacna clams are very tasty, almost sweet inside. Colorful, beautiful, but very tasty. It's time to cook the giant tridacna clam. Inside it can be green, it can be blue. Very beautiful inside. This type of tridacna is the tastiest. The coals are ready. I place the clam here. And add a few more sticks on top. To heat it well. The shell is large, so it will take more time. After a while the shell will heat up and open on its own. When it opens, it means that the broth inside is starting to boil. And just two minutes in this broth, the clam meat will cook. You must not overcook it. Let it stay juicy. The wind is blowing and the small twigs below are catching fire. This is good. Slowly it will heat the clam from below. I will add more sticks now to make a small fire. And from above the process will be faster. While the clam was heating on the coals, I covered it with small branches from above. Now I see the clam is starting to open slowly. Here below you can see it starting to open. A gap appeared. When the broth inside boils, it will be visible. After this moment, just two or three minutes and the tridacna is ready. These clams grow to just gigantic sizes. More than a meter in size and weighing more than 200 kilograms. Just imagine, such a giant shell, inside which there can be a lot of quite tasty meat. But at first glance, this harmless clam can be deadly for a diver or underwater hunter. If a hand gets inside this clam and it clamps its teeth, it will be almost impossible to pull out a finger. And at such a moment, while holding your breath, a diver may simply run out of air. Therefore, you need to be careful with these clams. They camouflage very well underwater. I constantly monitored the process. Gradually added small branches, maintained the temperature and a small flame of the fire, and after about 10 minutes, the clam opened. This means it is cooked. With a stick, I removed it from the coals. Let it cool down a bit and I will open it. I'm so tired. I'm just falling asleep on the go. I haven't slept for a day because of this turtle. I couldn't sleep at night. I woke up at 3. At 4 something, I returned to the hammock. And at 5.20, I had to get up for fishing. I was just lying and listening to how the turtle was crawling. How it was sighing. So I haven't slept for a day. And in such conditions, energy is spent very quickly. Multiply it by 2 considering that I also film every moment to show you. So I spend twice as much energy. I'm already walking with my eyes closing. My head is spinning. I will now eat this clam. And at sunset, I want to fish from that side because I have already seen a shark there three times on that side and I missed a GT as well. That place seemed interesting to me. Plus, when I was flying the drone again, I saw a big shark at that corner. So, the place is likely fish rich. That's why a predator lives there. It is there that I started hunting with a crossbow and catching my prey. Let's open this tridacna. Let's see. Let's see what's inside. Opening it and getting the meat was a task. The clam's strong muscles held the shell and I couldn't just open it with my hands. With a knife, I tried to reach the meaty foot to cut it. But even that was very difficult. The edges of this clam were sharp as blades. 
I accidentally cut my finger a little. But I'm used to it. So. I scratched my finger on this clam. This is what the dish looks like. Now let's try it. Mm. The meaty foot itself is tough, but tasty. Kind of sweet. Mm. Probably most like a mussel. Really sweet. Very tasty, but tough. I just tried the muscular tissue that holds the two shells together. Tasty, but tough. Look at this beautiful dish, right? During this time that I have been on the island, I have already gotten very used to it. And if you support this video and I return here for the third time, next time I will try to stay even longer and build myself a house. But tomorrow, according to the plan, a ship will come for me and take me from this island. Shark Island is a small, completely uninhabited island. There is not a single house on it. Not a single road. And not a single person except me. Only wild nature and an unforgettable underwater world. Also, after your voting, I decided to leave links in the description to the items I use in my videos. New unboxings, knives, masks, slingshots, and other survival kits, which I use in my videos. So now there will be much more useful information in the description under the video. That moment when everything is always wet, damp, soggy, always, just always. Now I'm going fishing. It's raining again. I take my long sleeve shirt and think, are you wet or very wet? And it is moderately wet. And you know what? Well, I'll wear it. It will somehow dry on me from body heat. At first it's wet, cold, unpleasant. Then gradually it warms up and becomes body temperature and you feel warmer. Because without it, it's even colder. And when the sun comes out, it starts to scorch and you put it on and everything is still wet. You try to dry it, but you can't keep up. Then you dove somewhere in the mangrove forest. It all got wet. And all the time, all the clothes, everything, everything, not just the clothes, everything is damp and wet. It is very frustrating, to be honest. So here's the point. The point is when there is no rain, when the sun is shining and you want to take a dip to refresh yourself, at such moments, you want to take off your shorts and just swim, so that the shorts stay dry for at least an hour. And here I can afford it. Because this is an uninhabited island, so I can take off my shorts and swim, and then put them on and they will stay dry for at least an hour, until it rains or until the next, until the next spear hunting, or some other adventures. So, enough with the moisture please, enough. Well, let's go test our luck today. Over there. I'm walking here in slippers, and right here, a craft is swimming underwater. Can you see it? 
Look, it swam away on its own business. It's a pity you weren't in the mangrove forest in the evening. I would have made soup out of you. At the last moment at sunset, I didn't lose hope. I took my spinning rod and threw the largest lures into the water. What if at the last moment I managed to catch another big shark? Because it was in this place that I noticed a shark swimming by from the drone. Someone chomped nearby, but it seemed to me that it was a shark, because I seemed to see a fin. Goosebumps go down my skin, friends. Someone big and angry. But why didn't it hit the lure? I like this place. It is much more active than the one I spent every morning at. I should have been fishing here. Someone is following the lure. You can see it. It's a shark. It showed its fin again, literally four, five meters away from me. Did you see the fin? This is how it surged at the lure. I'm sure these are shark habits. But why doesn't it attack then? It's unclear. Could it be a queen fish? Just like last time? I know that the queen fish likes smaller lures. Maybe it's following this one and is afraid to attack because it's a bit too big. Once I was here a couple of years ago with an Australian blogger, and I specifically threw only large lures, hoping to break my personal record without being distracted by small fish, and Kevin used small minnow lures, about 30, 40 grams, small ones like that. And these queen fish bit very consistently on these lures and I only had attempts at bites or strikes. Maybe the situation is repeating, but I don't want to get distracted again. Queenfish is good, big, I agree. For me, it's also a big fish, but I want something that will be remembered for a lifetime. I'm walking like this and here a crab peeks out from under a stone but a big one. Wow. This one is huge. Oh my gosh. A small fish escapes, gets between the prongs of the spear and escapes. Another attempt. Oops, see what I was talking about. Oh my gosh. 
It gets between the prongs and escapes. Darn it. There is another crowd sitting, lying, resting. If it were day, I would have caught it already and made a nice soup. But at night, nothing will be visible. Swimming, swimming, swimming fish. Uh, I am going after it. Wait, wait, where are you going? Wait, I say. Come on, come on. Oops. An interesting kind of mullet. Swam away. All right, I keep going. Friends, I see the same kind of fish, but bigger. It's usually small, but here it's big. Oh my gosh. Well, you rascal, got distracted by the camera. I see that the frame doesn't fit. Started to adjust the camera, back and forth and missed it. Oh, I need to catch it and show you what I caught. Did I make an excuse? Write in the comments if this excuse counts or not. Wow, wow, wow. What beautiful things do we have here? Look at this couple, two starfish, just very beautiful. Look, gosh, such beauty. One is chocolate colored and the other is red. I will lift it a little and show you, but not for long. You can lift a starfish for a couple of seconds. They write on the internet. But actually, friends, in the wild, I'll put it back in place so people don't get upset in the comments. Actually, in the wild, when I go fishing during the low tide at around 5 o'clock, yes, I see right on the shore when the water recedes these kinds of starfish in dozens, and I return, and at around 7 in the morning, the water just starts rising to these stars, and all this time, they were without water, and nothing bad happened. The next day I go and these stars are no longer there. They move calmly from place to place. This means that they are alive. And for a couple of hours, they can do without water without any problems. But of course, I'm not saying you should hold them in your hands for a couple of hours. It's better not to hold them at all. Because I don't know. Maybe it's harmful. Or maybe not. Very beautiful. Look, here are small needlefish. Like sticks. Caught it with my hand and it swam away. Damn, I just can't hold it. Who do we have here? Another black crate. A deadly poisonous snake, considered one of the most poisonous in the world. There is a blue crate with white stripes. This is a black crate with white stripes. Where were you during the day? Finally, another fish. Wow, there's already a catch here. So, moving further. It's already left without claws. 
Come here. So, I need more. Okay. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <sighs> Friends, there was an eel here. Eel, the eel just swam away. Ah, uh, it was just here. Oh my, I missed it. I missed it. At first I got scared, thinking it was a snake. But then I realized it was an eel. Damn, it's frustrating. It swam under a rock somewhere here. I just wanted to say that the last time I was here a few years ago, there were these eels. And today, I haven't seen a single one. And then it appeared and I missed it but very fast. First of all, I need to make a fire. I made a fire and filled a pot with water from the ocean, threw all the caught prey in there and cooked it over the fire. A couple of small fish as well. Inside... There should be meat too. Inside, there is meat too. There is... Here. Yes, good crabs. Very easy to clean, quickly. And inside, there's a lot of meat. The walk with the spear wasn't in vain. Caught myself more food. And now I'll have a hearty, tasty meal before bed. I had a good hearty meal and went to rest. I hope the captain hasn't forgotten and will come tomorrow to pick me up. But even if he forgets for a day, it's okay. I've somehow gotten used to being here. The first days were really tough. You think, damn, why did I come here? But then you settle in, get used to it, and it's like any other regular day. So, I'm off to sleep. Friends, I'm very glad that the number of sponsors on my channel is growing. With your support, there will be new interesting content. Thank you very much. And for those viewers who also want to become a sponsor of my channel, the link is in the description below the video. Good morning, friends. With each passing day, I wake up earlier and earlier. I couldn't sleep well all night. Kept thinking if the captain would forget about me and if my ship would come. So even before dawn I was already awake. Decided not to waste time and cleaned up all the plastic I had previously collected. Near my camp I put all the trash into plastic bags and will take it with me on the ship. As I mentioned, this island is completely uninhabited and there's no one to clean up the trash washed ashore by the ocean. You saw how a huge turtle came ashore to lay her eggs, her future offspring. And to do that, she had to make her way through piles of trash. So I'll try to do at least some small good, which I wish for you too, friends. Always clean up all your trash after your rest. If you picked up your trash and saw someone else's nearby, pick it up too. Don't be lazy and set an example for others. Friends, I'm sitting in the shade waiting for the ship. Packed my things and the ship is already an hour late. Which is very unusual for it. I have a feeling 
that I will have an extra couple of days of survival on this island. In general, during my survival on this island, I've gained even more experience. And of course, some minor injuries, scrapes, and cuts, but compared to all the emotions I got during this period, it's a very fair price. I think it will take me another couple of weeks to recover from this survival. And for each scratch on my body, I'll remember some interesting story. In my opinion, the second season of Survival on Shark Island turned out to be even more interesting, more eventful. If you agree with me, give a thumbs up under this video. During the underwater hunt, I managed to catch a fish. And during fishing, I managed to catch a big fish. Here is how special this shark island is. It's not for nothing that I came back here. Not for nothing at all. Well, of course, what kind of shark island would it be if I hadn't managed to catch a giant shark? Very sharp teeth. And with the help of a primitive homemade spear, I also managed to get myself some food. Thanks to the tropical rain, there were no problems with fresh water either. And the Chinese traps from AliExpress managed to catch fish underwater. And a mangrove crab on land. And I made a new friend on the island, a giant sea turtle. Definitely, I will have something to remember. Finally, they remembered that I'm here. But for some reason, they are turning somewhere. Hey, hello. Looks like they changed their mind. Everyone noticed. Noticed they're swimming. So, everything is going according to plan? Well, Shark Island, see you. Let's thank nature. Let's thank the island. For its hospitality, you could call it that. And we'll definitely see each other again. Well, friends, this adventure was very interesting. Not easy at all. The rain made its adjustments, but it was interesting in its own way. But despite this, I managed to get fresh water and food. I even managed to catch a shark. By the way, friends, I wanted to add, if you like the survival on the uninhabited Shark Island, watch it in full season. Go to my playlist and find Shark Island 2 and watch from beginning to end. In full chronology, my survival on Shark Island has come to an end. And that means only one thing, that my new adventures are just beginning. So subscribe to my channel to not miss new episodes. If you like this survival season, then share this video with your friends or loved ones. Like this video. And as soon as it gets 15,000 likes, I will publish the sequel. Goodbye everyone.